Item number SCP-2932 Object Class Thaumule Special Containment Procedures SCP-2932 is currently contained at its location of discovery. Mobile Task Force SHE-9, the Wardens, have been tasked with handling containment efforts, including reduction of public awareness of SCP-2932 in nearby towns and villages and amnestic treatment of individuals who come into contact with SCP-2932. A fence perimeter has also been established around SCP-2932, with warnings posted about a protected nature reserve within. This perimeter is to be routinely patrolled. Mobile Task Force SHE-9 has also been given orders to work alongside SCP-2932-A in an effort to contain instances of SCP-2932-1 that have escaped from SCP-2932. Information gathered from SCP-2932-A regarding possible Euclid and Keter-class entities originating from within SCP-2932 is listed later in this document. Mobile Task Force SHE-9 personnel, as well as additional Foundation staff members assigned to SCP-2932, are to familiarize themselves with this information. Efforts are ongoing to attempt repairs of SCP-2932-2, although due to the complexity of the object and the nature of its design, personnel must maintain care in their duties and not upset the already fragile state of SCP-2932-2. Foundation staff medical doctors that have been trained in the function of SCP-2932-2 are to rotate on a six-hour shift to assure that a doctor is always available in the event of an emergency. Information regarding this object, gathered from SCP-2932-A, is detailed later in this document. Should SCP-2932-2 experience a gross failure, experimental power supply systems are to be activated in an attempt to maintain the current function of SCP-2932. Should these supplies prove inadequate, Mobile Task Force SHE-9 and additional security personnel are to prepare for a massive breach of containment scenario. Note, Personnel are reminded not to attempt authorization from any genetic matching organisms, as this often results in retaliation from the guard organisms. Description: SCP-2932 is a massive organic structure located within the Reserva Communal El Sierra in eastern central Peru. Externally, SCP-2932 consists of trees, vines, and other plant life that have been formed into a large dome structure. Lighting around the external of SCP-2932 consists of an array of bioluminescent bulbs that grow from within SCP-2932. These are a species that, until discovery of SCP-2932 was not identified, along with many other instances of plant life that exist throughout SCP-2932. The dome structure itself is indestructible, and attempts to damage the dome often result in retaliation by the aggressive and hostile mobile plant-based organisms that act as guards to SCP-2932. The main door to SCP-2932, located on the south side of the structure, cannot be opened without authorization from an entity located within SCP-2932, or without authorization from a genetic matching organism that exists near the entrance. The main level interior of SCP-2932 consists of a number of arched hallways and large rooms, equally organic in nature as the exterior of SCP-2932, with similar lighting organisms throughout. Investigations of these areas have indicated that, at one point, the rooms were administrative offices for the lower portions of SCP-2932, and signs of habitation exist in a number of larger areas. Information has been gathered from this section regarding instances of SCP-2932-1, and has been filed with information gathered from SCP-2932-A. The lower levels of SCP-2932 are below ground, and consist primarily of a massive open chamber with numerous catwalk structures leading to various landings throughout. Most of the available wall space is covered in cocoon-like pods composed of an extremely durable plant matter, which increases in size lower in the chamber. The apparent use of these pods are to contain instances of SCP-2932-1. To the right of every pod is a device composed of various plant matters with a touch-based screen composed of a translucent silica construct that acts as an interface for the pod with which it is attached. Information regarding the SCP-2932-1 entity contained within the pod is listed, as well as a mechanism by which to open and close the pod, although this option is locked out to individuals without the proper genetic identification. While the overwhelmingly majority of these pods are intact and listed as active, at least have been ruptured. SCP-2932-A is an elderly Class I neurohumanoid entity that resides within SCP-2932 and acts as its caretaker. SCP-2932-A has six primary appendages and walks upright on the rear two. SCP-2932-A's torso has two primary segments, both covered in a fine, long hair. The head of SCP-2932-A is roughly ovaloid with two sets of eyes, one compound and one vertebraic. 
The front of the head contains a humanoid mouth and a long, prehensile nasal structure. The top of SCP-2932-A's head contains a number of small spines, but is mostly covered in additional long, gray, fine hair. On its back, SCP-2932-A has four large insectoid wings, although these display damage that did not properly heal. SCP-2932-2 is a large vascular organ suspended in the center of SCP-2932's main chamber and serves as the primary power source for SCP-2932. SCP-2932-2 pulsates at a pace of approximately 8 beats per minute, although this has been known to drop to as low as 3 beats per minute during emergency events. According to SCP-2932-A, SCP-2932-2 is the heart of the goddess Titania who constructed the prison with her own body and put her heart within it to sustain it. Given information gathered from SCP-2932-A, it has been deduced that SCP-2932 was once and currently is a massive incarceration system designed to contain a large number of creatures and other entities. Due to a catastrophic event affecting the original owners of SCP-2932, see Document Alpha-1596-1000 for more information. The site was closed and the responsibility of containment was left to a skeleton crew of SCP-2932 staff members, of whom SCP-2932-A was the warden. Over time, this contingent of personnel either perished, defected, or disappeared, and a facility began to fall in disrepair. This coupled with the increasing fragility of SCP-2932's main power supply, SCP-2932-2 caused a number of containment pods to malfunction, releasing their contents. Interview 2932-A the following interview was conducted during early exploration of SCP-2932, shortly after Foundation personnel were allowed into the structure by SCP-2932-A. Initial communication with SCP-2932-A was hampered by a language barrier, as SCP-2932-A was capable of speaking only its native language and Quechua. Once the translator became available, the interview was conducted. Date: August 14, 1985 Interviewer Dr. Z. Johnson Interviewee SCP-2932-A Translator, Dr. F. Amora. Begin log. Thank you for meeting with me, SCP-2932-A. I have a number of questions for you, if that's alright. It is, please. Who constructed this place? My people, the Hudaru, were the builders of Titania's prison. The Children of the Night came to us and, knowing us as a people of fine craftsmanship, commissioned the prison to be built. Why did they want to build a prison? Those were different times, friend. The Children of the Night were powerful, yes, and influential, very, but in their dominance of the world they too had collected enemies, greater and more terrible than any that exist now. The Children of the Night prayed the glorious Titania, and she gave unto them her heart, which the Hudaru then used to craft her prison. What happened that caused the disrepair we have observed throughout SCP-2932? Aggressive clicking. Do not be so coy, child of the sun. You know very well what the cause of this was. Certainly you have not forgotten so easily. I see. SCP-2932-A. Some of the pods throughout SCP-2932 have been damaged. What do you know about the entities contained within them? They were nothing. Raindrops before a greater storm. As the heart began to fail, it became imperative that more power be diverted to the truly great enemies of the Children of the Night. Because of this, some of the lesser escaped. Those that I could, I destroyed. Others became victims to Titania's guardians. Few escaped. Truly great enemies? Yes. Laughter. Like I said, there are many creatures that haunted even the Children of the Night, and the greatest of those, the ones that could not be killed, were brought here. The Goddess has been gracious, and has not given them their freedom. Should the heart fail, though, clicking, you Children of the Sun are strong, yes, but you are not the Children of the Night. You would be nothing more to them than sand before the tide. End log. Addendum 2932-1 The following logs have been gathered from terminals regarding potentially dangerous SCP-2932-1 entities, most of which are in active containment. Notes gathered from SCP-2932-A are also listed, and SCP-2932-A have provided full translations for all the entries. Prisoner Name Ephilia Incarceration Active Date of Incarceration 9 Moon 17 Cycle 4533 Rotation Sentence. Endless Rotation. SCP-2932-A Notes Yes, Ophelia was a dangerous one. She lived within this forest and hunted for the children when the night came. She was not as you are, or as the children were. I do not know from whence she came, but it was a place that abhors the pleasing form. She was disgusting and beautiful, and she murdered the youngest son of the Lord of the Night and turned his body into a puppet to lure the Lord's wife into the darkness. By glorious Titania, she will rot within that cell until the stars go out. 
Prisoner name, Yan Kamur. Incarceration active. Date of incarceration, 1 moon, 20 cycle, 46, 20 rotation. Sentence, endless rotation. SCP-2932-A notes, Kamur was a creature of the heavens, fallen from the skies. The children believed that he was one of their dark gods, but soon found that he was only a beast and a hungry beast. Thousands he devoured before the children brought him down, and even as he was brought here, he threatened to devour us as well. They called Yon Kamur the Ravenous One. I wonder sometimes about how his hunger has grown. Prisoner name Malva Gar Tamur. Incarceration inactive. Date of incarceration 2 Moon 19 Cycle 2711 Rotation. Sentence Endless Rotation. SCP 2932A Notes. Some creatures brought into Titania's arms were lauded and their captors praised, but Malva Gar Tamur was brought in secret. Even I don't know of its incarceration until after it was done, but the children assured me it was for the best that I was kept unaware. I remember when Malva Gar Tamor escaped, though, and the children had not lied to me then. Sometimes it is best to not know. Prisoner name Adam L. Asim. Incarceration active. Date of incarceration 7 Moon 3 Cycle 4301 Rotation. Sentence Endless Rotation. SCP 2932A Notes. This one was a child of the sun, but the children of the sun abhorred him as much as the children of the night. Adam L. Asim could will things into existence with a glance, could move mountains and dry riverbeds by touching them. Something great and terrible lived within his mind, and the children wasted no time lashing him to the stone and giving him the Titania. There were others like him, dangerous children of the sun from the east, but they are not here. There is a cell reserved here for the one with desolation in his steps, and one for the other. I do not expect to fill them. Prisoner name Fay. Incarceration active. Date of incarceration: one moon, one cycle, ten rotation. Sentence: endless rotation. SCP 2932A notes. Do you believe the children of the sun were the first to overthrow those who came before them?